So returning to chapter 15 and starting on this slide labeled oxy acids, we're going to talk about the various strengths. You can see that all of these are weak acids. We know there's really only seven strong acids, so it's not a surprise that all of these are weak acids. Here we're going to talk about what are called the hypohalous acids. They all start with the words hypo and end with us because they're set up so they only have a single oxygen in the, in the uh, acid. Of these, the strongest, based on Ka's, is the hypochlorous acid. Why? Because the chlorine is the most electronegative of the three that we're talking about, the chlorine, the bromine, and the iodine. So since chlorine is the most electronegative and it's sitting out here, it is trying to pull electrons away from the area where the hydrogen is, which allows the hydrogen to escape as an H plus ion most effectively. So that explains this. And, the, and of course, we're not going to have one with fluorine because fluorine wouldn't be able to sustain this sort of a situation. All right, on to the next slide. Carboxylic acids. This is a carboxylic acid. The R means the remainder. It's the rest of the uh, molecule, and we aren't going to talk about what it is. Whatever it is, that's going to influence the name, but we're mostly worried about this end and why it matters. If you take something like this that has a carboxyl group, this COOH group, and you put it in water, it will form an equilibrium where it loses this hydrogen as an H+, plus, as a proton, to the water, forming the hydronium ion, and this ends up having a negative charge because positive charge, well, they have to add up to zero. In that case, then, these two, that used to be two bonds here and one bond here, can form a, a grouping like this, a resonance structure, and you have delocalization of that extra negative charge. You don't know whether it's over here or over here. It's sort of spread over the whole thing. And this makes it more stable. So this sort of thing where you might not necessarily expect it to come off, yes, it's got, a, it's got more options on resonance, and so it's more likely to remove itself from the situation. If you have electronegative elements over here in R, then they will increase the acid strength because they will pull more electron density away from this bond, allowing the H plus to escape more easily. More about this resonance delocalization. Because if you look at acetic acid, you see a COOH group. There's your carboxylic group. Down here at ethanol, you see OH is here. But this, look at the pKa's. You can see this is much more likely to end up losing a hydrogen ion than this is. And that's because there's nothing else helping to pull electron density away from this bond. Over here, the oxygen itself helped pull it away. And if you had anything decent over here, it could help pull it away too. But the fact that this is here as being a very electronegative atom means that it's pulling electrons away from this bond and allowing the H plus more likely to escape. And then you end up with that carboxylic resonance we were talking about that you could draw it as either the double bond here or the double bond there, which we effectively means that that double bond is being shared among the two oxygens. Five different carboxylic acids. See, they all end in the COOH group that I was talking about before. And if we look, we can see that they are all weak acids, but we can see that as we go down this group, they are getting stronger. This was 10 to the minus fifth. By the time we get down here, it's 10 to the minus one. This is a lot stronger. The Ka is much larger. 
So on this acetic acid, this is the one we had before, we have a methyl group, that's a CH3 over here, attached to the carboxylic group there. That's, that's about as simple as it can get. The only thing that is making it easier for this hydrogen to escape is the fact that you have another oxygen over here that is helping to pull electrons away from that area because it is so electronegative. Is that why it's red on top? That is exactly why it's red on top. It's like that stress. Yes, it's... The, you can see that this side of the atom is more, the molecule, is more negative, all right? Using that coloring, the coloring. Now, if you come down here to chloracetic acid, you will see the big difference is that we have replaced one of these hydrogens with a chlorine. There it is, there's the chlorine. Now, chlorine's quite electronegative, not as electronegative as the oxygen. You see it doesn't go to red, it goes to just yellow, right? but it is pulling more electron density away from the end where there's this hydrogen attached to the oxygen. So it becomes a stronger acid. Now, dichloroacetic, okay, we have replaced two of these hydrogens with chlorine. See, there they are. Now there's two of them all still pulling away from that bond, and again, it gets a little stronger, right? From minus three to minus two for that exponent and trichloroacetic. Okay, we have now replaced all three of those hydrogens with chlorine atoms, and they're all pulling electron density away from this area, and it's gotten even stronger. Now you can see we do have, this is even stronger, not because of 10 to the minus one, that's the same, but 2.3 increases to 5.9. When we switch from making these chlorines to fluorines, we know fluorine is, the most electronegative atom. And so it is pulling electron density away and making it easier for this hydrogen to escape.